Hello everybody, greetings and welcome to another episode of 8 Bits in the Basement where you find me here in front of my Commodore VIC-20 once more. And the reason for that is I want to show you this little thingy that I picked up. It's a memory expansion for the VIC-20 and it allows us to play all kinds of more complex games and well a few extra bits and pieces as well. Now you may remember in the last episode where I was looking at the VIC I said that I would like to maybe build a memory expansion card myself and use it but as it turned out I was having a little look around on the internet for the parts I needed and I came across my retrostore.co.uk now I'm in no way affiliated with that site and this little card I paid for with my own money but it occurred to me that in fact to buy the card from this guy was cheaper than to buy the parts so that's what I did. I took a chance on it and the build quality is exceptional and I figured uh, he deserved a shout out for that alone. So link in description to where I got it and he does stuff for the ZX Spectrum and Commodore 64 also. Now all that aside I said also what I wanted to do was build a multi-cart for this guy but actually with this card here although it be it very convoluted we don't actually have to because we can take cartridge ROMs from disk and copy them onto this guy temporarily and use it as a cartridge on the VIC-20 as well. So why not have a look at all that right now? Eh? Okay, so let me introduce you to the latest addition to my little retro collection. So this guy here is a 35 kilobyte RAM expansion for the Commodore VIC-20 and it's based on a design by Rudd Baltazin. And um, what it is, is a little bank of eight dip switches and a logic chip that controlled these two chips here, two SRAM chips, a 32 kilobyte and an eight kilobyte. And I suppose to maintain compatibility, we can use in these switches, give the VIC-20 a RAM upgrade of anywhere from one kilobyte, three kilobytes, eight kilobytes, 16 kilobytes, 24 kilobytes, or 35 kilobytes of RAM. And that way we can play some of the much more complicated games and whatnot. Or if you're into productivity on your VIC-20, you can be a lot more productive. Now, one of the nice things about this is the way it was designed, this little chip here is an eight kilobyte SRAM. So it works with the 32 kilobyte in order to give us the full 35 kilobytes of RAM. But also what you can do with this is you can make it uh, pretty much work like a cartridge. Uh, because it it sits in the same memory location as a cartridge would on the Commodore VIC-20. So using switches one and two here, you can enable or disable this chip, and you can also enable or disable writing to this chip. So um, yeah, all in all, we've got memory expansion, and we've got a kind of a cartridge system as well. So we'll take a look at all that right about now, eh? All right then, so here we are back in front of the old VIC-20 and we're going to try a couple of little cartridge experiments. So what I've done is I'm after plugging the expansion card into the back of the VIC, but I've only enabled the first two switches, which means that the eight kilobytes of static RAM on that little card are available to the VIC and that they can also be written to. So effectively what we have here is a VIC with an empty cartridge plugged into it. So what I have on this five and a quarter inch disc here are a couple of eight and 16 kilobyte cartridge files. And what we'll do is we will try loading one of the eight kilobyte ones onto the eight kilobyte static RAM there inside in that expansion card and see if we can run it. So what I'll do first is I'll just show you some of the files that I've put on this disc here. So I do my load dollar comma eight. And when I type list, it'll show me all the files that are on the disc. Now what we'll do is we'll load up Amiga Wraith because that's a little eight kilobyte game and it doesn't need anything special in order to get it to work. So if I just type load Amiga Wraith, comma eight and comma one and press return, it should load up. Now the comma eight is because we're loading from our 1541 disk drive, but the comma one is actually quite important because anytime that a VIC-20 or a Commodore 64 saves a file, the first two bytes of the file contain information about where in memory it should live. Now Amiga Race was saved from a cartridge which means that the first two bytes tell it where it should be loaded to run as a cartridge and because little eight kilobytes of static RAM that are in that little expansion card live exactly where a cartridge uh, ROM would live this comma one will make sure that Amiga Race is loaded onto that static RAM chip. Now, once it's loaded up, it should work for us. We shouldn't have any problem at all. 
However, if I type run like you would with a basic program, what you get is a syntax error. If I type execute, you get an error as well. So how do we get it to run? Well, generally speaking, a cartridge is inserted when the computer is turned off and to turn it on makes it work. So you need to power cycle the system. Now, generally speaking, if you power cycle the system here at this, it's going to wipe the memory that's inside in that expansion card. So you're going to end up with no game at all. Um, so what you could do is you could install a reset switch on the VIX so that when you press that, it'll reset the computer and the game will start. However, there's no need really to do that because there is a system command, which is sys 64802. And when we press return, it'll do a warm reset on the VIC and start up our cartridge for us. So there we go. The, whoops, the cartridge is working or it's working exactly as it would if we had a real cartridge inside in the VIC there. So it shows that, that that works. You can load up a myriad of cartridge games that way. However, there are a couple of cartridges, eight kilobytes and especially 16 kilobytes, that need a couple of little extra tricks in order to get them to work. So I'll show you a 16 kilobyte one now and we'll see how to load up those. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to try loading up a 16 kilobyte game. Now, generally speaking, you can have a look and see what switches need to be enabled on the RAM cart or on the expansion card in order to enable the right portions of memory and all the rest. But I don't really bother with that. I found that if you turn on all the switches and you have the full contingency of memory available to you, generally it works just fine. So what we'll do is we'll try loading DigDog and I'll show you DigDog on the disk because there are a couple of files that make it up. So here you'll see I have digdog1, digdog2, and then a third file called digdog. And the reason for that is cartridge files come in blocks of eight kilobytes. So Amiga Race is an eight kilobyte file. So there's only one called Amiga Race. Now digdog is 16 kilobytes. So we've got two files. So we've got an eight kilobyte and an eight kilobyte, but we want to load them up in a certain way and to go into a certain portion of memory. And that's why I've created a third little file here that's called digdog, a little file that we can write ourselves, very easy to do, and it'll load up these the way they should be loaded up and then execute them. So I will load digdog, the file that I wrote to get it to work, and we don't do our comma one when we're loading this one, we just do load digdog comma eight. It loads from the floppy disk drive here, and if I list it, you see there's just three lines in it. The first line gets it to load digdog1 with the comma 8 and the comma 1 into the correct portion of memory for it. And then once that's done, it'll load digdog2 in the same way into the correct portion of memory for that. And then fin it'll, finally, it'll finish up with a sys64802 command in order to warm boot the system. So once I've loaded my little program here, I just type run. And it takes a minute or so, but it'll load in those two files into the correct portions in memory and it should execute them. We should be able to play the game without having to do anymore. Now, so there we go. DigDog is after loading up just like that. I can use my little keys here to center it on screen and F1 to start. And we can play DigDog exactly the same as if we were playing it from an original cartridge. No trouble at all to it. And uh, it's a good little game is DigDog. But that there is how you can load up 16 kilobyte games. Now, there are a couple of games that'll try and throw curveballs at you. For example, there's likes of Tutankhamen, which is an eight kilobyte game and loads up okay. But once you try and run it, you end up with, with garbage on screen. And the reason for that is that developers realized that people were doing this. They were trying to run, or they weren't trying to, they were actually managing to run cartridge games from RAM. So what they did was they coded it in such a way that the program would try to overwrite itself. And if you were running from a real cartridge, you'd be running from ROM, so it wouldn't manage to overwrite itself and game it run away fine. If you were running it from RAM, it could actually overwrite itself and corrupt itself and therefore the game wouldn't run. So it was a way of kind of copy protecting itself. However, if you come across a game like that, that doesn't work, all you need to do is load up the game as normal, but before you issue the SYS64802 command, you just disable switch one. So that'll that'll disable writing to the eight kilobyte static ROM, and away you go. You can play away. It won't, it'll it'll behave pretty much like a ROM file at that stage, or like a little piece of ROM in the VIC20. So another little trick that developers use to try and get people 
to not be able to load cartridge games into RAM and use them was this one here. You'll see this is Moon Patrol, which is a 16 kilobyte uh, cartridge game. And I've loaded it up in exactly the same way as I did Dig Dug. However, this guy needs a power cycle in order to get it to start. Little system 64802 command isn't enough to do it. And as I said, generally speaking with these little expansion cards here, if we power cycle, it'll wipe the static RAM. So we end up back to square one and not being able to play the game. However, this particular card that I have in here, be it by happy accident or by design, when I power cycle the system, if it's only for a second or so, it can manage to retain what it has in its static memory and make the game work. And I think the reason for it is the same as you see with some televisions that have a little lead on them. When you plug it out or turn it off, it takes a few seconds for the lead to fade away. And the reason for that is that the capacitors inside in the television have enough power to keep that lead lit for a little while. And I think it's exactly the same thing that's going on with the VIC here. When we power down the VIC, there's enough power in the capacitors just to keep the static RAM alive just for a second or two in order to let us do this little um, cold reset and get it to work properly. So um, that there is Moon Patrol working as it wasn't intended to. And we can play away on it exactly as if it was the cartridge game. So what we can glean from that is with this particular little expansion card here, we can play all the cartridges that there are. We can play the eight kilobyte ones, the eight kilobyte ones and 16 kilobyte ones that had little um, routines written into them to corrupt them if they were being played from RAM instead of ROM by disabling switch one there, we can play those. We can also power cycle the system if it's only for a second or so, and we can play these games as well. And uh, yeah, all around for playing cartridge games, this little system seems to work away great. One other thing is we can also load games from cassette as well. They can be saved to cassette, although that is kind of tricky to do. I'm not going to get into that because I'll be honest with you, I don't really know exactly how to do it, but I am going to leave a link to a video that I found down below that's very interesting on how actually to get the data from cartridges and save them onto disc or cassette. So if you're interested in that, have a look in the description down below. So I thought what we would do next is we would go ahead and have a look at some of the games that are available, newly released, that will use the memory ex expansion to its full and just see what's available for the VIC-20 nowadays. Okay, so starting off, we'll have a little look at Attack of the Petsky Robots for the old VIC-20, a program by David Murray, the 8-bit guy. And so Attack of the Petsky Robots is played using the keyboard, not a joystick, because there are way too many keys. We've got our four directional buttons where we can move up, down, left and right. And we've got a further four where we can shoot up, down, left and right. And then we've got two other buttons that we can use, one to move objects and one to search objects. And then, of course, we've got a whole system where we can select different weapons and different items that we want to use to destroy those little pesky, petsky robots. So what you need to do in this game is you need to pick up all kinds of different objects and weapons. And what you do is you use them in various ways in order to destroy these little robots. For example, I've got a health kit. I've got magnets here, electromagnets. And I've also got little time bombs. So I can disperse time bombs and blow up robots with them. So, for example, whoops. Oh, unless I get blown up myself first. There we go. Did I destroy anything? No, I didn't. And I got killed. So look at this. Doom got itself a little port over to Commodore VIC-20 as well a couple of years back. Okay, so if you remember, it's pretty much exactly the same as it was on the PC back in 94. We've got our little menu screen here where, where we can select new game, change options and all the rest. We can select the level we want. We'll go for knee, knee deep in the dead and our difficulty level. So it takes a little while to load up. And again, this is a game that we're playing with keyboard. So you see the screen is very, very small, but I mean, that's understandable. The Ulvik, although it has a bit of memory to it now, it doesn't have all that much processing power. So we're going around pretty much the same as we did in the PC version shooting all these monsters and whatnot and picking up ammo packs and all the rest only on a very very small screen but like i say for a vic it's quite impressive okay so the next game i'd like to show you here is a game called 
pentagoret and it's an isometric 3d thing a bit like batman was on the spectrum but again it needs the full complement of 40 kilobytes of memory available in order to be able to use it so this here is the loading screen that it gives and i i think it looks nice i never saw anything like it on the vic 20 before i mean well, when using cassettes at least with what i had for my vic you've got a bit of music playing and you've also got this image here and you've got the text scrolling behind which i find kind of impressive the pentagorath the castle of fiends and uh, this is a nice little isometric adventure puzzle type game in which we play this little black creature here that's after being trapped in a prison cell in the castle of Pentagorath, and he has to try and escape but while he's locked in he can search different items we'll search our bunk bed here for example and we find nothing at all so we're pretty much trapped in our cell but how can we get out well if we jump on the drain we can get out so there we go but uh, it's full of little puzzles like that we also have to pick up objects and use them in different places you see that some rooms are guarded by little kind of guardian little fiends and if you touch them you lose energy which is shown on the bar down here at the bottom and it's it's that a kind of puzzle exploration adventure type game and um, and it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun but it really showcases what the vic 20 can do when its memory is expanded right out so uh, that there is is a great little game also for the vic 20. okay so another episode of eight bits in the basement is drawing to a close and we're after having a little look at that 35 kilobyte memory expansion seeing how we can use it to load up cartridge roms and also some of the newer games that have come out in recent years for the commodore vic 20 itself and it is a great addition to any vic 20 system well really because it opens up much more advanced and complex games for the vic that are a lot of fun to play now i know many of you may be saying but peter you promised that you were going to build a memory expansion and put it in your vic 20 and we really wanted to see you blow up your vic 20. well i say don't fret and don't fear because you'll remember the alice 4k that i got not too long ago well i'm after buying all the pieces i need to make 128 kilobyte ram expansion for that so in the new year you can see me blow up that system and well if that kind of thing interests you why not click on the subscribe button if you haven't done so already and you'll be notified of all the damage i do to old computers when i try and expand them and do stuff to them uh, that being said if you like this video give us now a thumbs up not much point in giving thumbs down anymore it seems because well youtube are effectively after disabling that and other than that an old comment is always appreciated we like the old comments and i always try to answer any comments that i get be there either good or bad so uh with all that being said thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode so until then stay retro yeah